Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and in this lesson we are going to look at what I'm calling this video as five chord hacks which you may not have found or observed in traditional piano books or um, you know YouTube videos, conventional stuff. So these are things which I do very often on the piano and a lot of students have always asked me you know what makes your playing different than my playing and what are these little things which you do which kind of add spice and flavor and make the music a lot more professional right and I feel that all these techniques are simple very but very efficient and very professional so anyone could use them so let's get started technique number one is a technique which i call as finger swapping right so while playing chords if you just take a simple flow of maybe the chords of the c major scale that's c major d minor e minor f major g major a minor and b diminished now if you hear it sonically there is a little bit of a gap, isn't it? Why is there a gap? The gap is there because I have to sort of jump to the next chord, especially when two chords don't have any notes in common. Example, C major and D minor. Right? So you have to sort of take your fingers off and move. Now, one way to counter this is to use chord inversions. But there are a lot of instances where you may need to like climb up and you may need to just jump up randomly to serve more melodic things or to serve a different kind of voicing perhaps. So let's explore this with a series of chords so I can just show you how this whole finger swapping thing works. So if I play something like... See what's happening there? Now, in a normal world, there's a kind of a jump between each chord, right? So I try to avoid that. So just check this out. C major, G major is normal, but now I want to go to A minor. So I did C major, G major, now A minor, I don't have any more free fingers, right? My pinky is taken up by this uh, G major's B. So I have to now jump it and move here. So instead of doing that, you'd kind of swap out the old fingers and put in some new fingers which allows you to certainly play the next chord more easily. So the whole idea about finger swapping is how do you make the next chord easy? Right? It doesn't matter where you are, it kind of gives you that freedom to traverse this way or that way in the piano to serve whatever chord you're going to play next. So if you do C major, I have some fingers for G, so I play that, but now I swap them out to go to A minor and that allows me to play with my pinky and yes, one finger may have to jump. But the whole idea of finger swapping is at least two out of the three notes of the triad should should sort of linger on or should sustain onward to the next chord to make the chord playing a lot smoother. So what I would do is C major swap. Now I want to go there. I was here. I want to go there and play F major because I like that note. Right? So I think it sounds quite smooth and it may not look so great but the whole idea is it's about what it sounds like at the end of the day. So you may not have found this technique used a lot because what happens is the piano players tend to use the sustain pedal or you have tons of reverb to kind of compensate for all this. But there are two things which sort of happened to me while growing up as a kid. One is the piano which we used to play in the house the upright piano did not have a working sustain pedal. It didn't, nothing worked. So whenever I pressed it, something went wrong with the piano and then we had to call the tuner. And I also used to observe my mom and granddad in the church playing the pipe organ. 
and with their style of playing especially playing these hymns they would move around really smoothly and i would quietly see them swapping out fingers but then that's not what you teach in a piano class right la la na la 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 sounds quite smooth i guess right and then of course the left hand follows you ask me that actually sounds very choral and very melodic as well normally when we play chords well we either play them using the block positions or you kind of fight that by playing inversions right if you haven't already do watch my entire series on chord inversions which would help you really navigate through chords but once you know your chords now your chord inversions when you play them together and when you're in the heat of the moment there's always a need to kind of break out of convention to break out of the standard technique which you're taught you know shift smoothly between chords but what if the melody demands it like in this example <laughs> you see all these quick swapping stuff keep happening right so this is what i want you guys to keep at the back of your mind when you play the piano slowly but surely it may come into your weaponry right and i hope it does and i hope it makes sense right guys so the next rather unconventional technique which i use on the piano while playing chords is what i call as chord flams okay flams are derived from the snare drum of the drummer where they do that very often instead of hitting the snare as tha they hit it as thra right so you get that additional hit right you also hear it a lot in marching band with snare drums there so and you hear it a lot with guitars right a guitar co- conceptually is a six string instrument and the musician sort of slides his or her hand down the six string so inevitably he is not playing all the six strings exactly together there's a kind of there's obviously a small delay between the notes and on the piano when we play chords let's say e minor like this we tend to want to play them together right that's generally what's taught and if you're a electronic music producer if you use softwares you'll see that those midi bars are like exactly aligned now i think that's not cool and i don't think that's the greatest way to play chords especially when you listen to guitars drums and all these very natural instruments which flam so well right i guess that's where the term flamenco guitar came into being possibly Right guys so let's get started with this whole chord flaming business so you go E minor and B E G that is and I at practice playing it like this Your ears are going to be the best judge right you've obviously heard music played before so you don't want it to be like you don't want to forget the two notes of the chord or you don't want to like slip you know It shouldn't sound awkward then you obviously have to go back to normal boring block hits right so the whole idea is get this to kind of be part of your weaponry just it should be a normal way of playing chords as opposed to that which i think tends to sound a lot more forceful a lot more rob- robotic and not so natural compared to this for some reason this feels a lot more human and this is generally how you will find me playing chords whether it's a triad or whether it's a bigger chord right and what's nice about flaming once you practice with one hand you can sort of practice with both hands like the left hand leading towards the right hand something like this right but the idea the whole idea is not to hear a million notes and you don't have to do it all the time either like for example you know or 
I tend to do it very often then, maybe more often than I probably should. But you get the idea, I hope. This is called as chord flamming, which could be like a very default way to play chords, to kind of make it a lot more human, if you ask me. Right guys, so moving onward to technique number three, which I find very, very useful to think of while playing my chords, is what do each of the fingers do? You have your thumb, index, middle, ring and pinky. I'm sure you know that by now. But anyway, so the first challenge which I found a lot of students playing chords is they don't like playing chords starting on a black note, right? So there's a simple hack for that. It's just common sense. Your thumb is a small finger. So when you move all your other hands inside to play a chord, like let's say D flat major or C sharp major, which is... C sharp F A flat or D flat F A flat so you go normally if you have to play this chord it's a bit tricky right but what I would suggest you to do is just keep your hand always pointing straight don't turn your hand that also uh, uh, you know de-angles your body so always keep your hand straight and if you have to which you most definitely will when you're playing black chords or chords starting on a black note, you can angle your thumb moving in. So the thumb just moves in. It's a very stretchy finger. So go in there and play deep. I found a lot of people continue to want to play, you know, away from the black note. There's no harm in going inside, right? And my hand, my fingers are quite big and thick, so to speak. So. I'm not having that much of a problem playing it. So, you can do D flat this way. You can do E flat, A flat, F sharp, some minors. The whole idea is the thumb goes in. And another uh, issue with the top fingers I found with students is the ring finger and the pinky. So what I like to do is since the pinky is a smaller finger, Reserve it for the last note of a chord if that last note is a white color note. And reserve the ring finger for the last note of a chord if the last note is a black color note for obvious reasons. So if you take let's say a D major chord in this inversion, A, D, F sharp. This has F sharp at the top. I would most definitely want to play it with these fingers. Thumb, index and the ring finger for the F sharp. And then if I want to go to G after that, my pinky is waiting there for it. It's also great when you're playing inversions. Generally, when you play chords, all your five fingers need to be activated. So that's something I would highly recommend. Some instances may also demand the index finger to replace the thumb while playing a, a, a black color chord or a chord starting on a black note. Like if you do A major like this, Let's say you don't have the time to play it like that. You can always use your index, but try to use your index generally at the edge of the black key. Not here. Otherwise, there's a kind of an imbalance created. And also, due to physics, it's going to be very tough to play a white key there because it's suspended there. So you will have to push a lot more down and your fingers will start hurting. So generally, you could play a chord starting on a black note like this or if you are doing, doing it with your thumb starting, angle the thumb, move all the way in, keep your hand straight. And then what did I say about the ring and the pinky usage? If the last note is black, ring finger. If the last note is white, pinky finger. Now what do I do about the middle finger? Well, I leave that to you. That's It's the middle finger. It can go anywhere, right? So play around with this and hope that that tip made some kind of sense. Right, guys? So moving onward to technique number four. It's basically about a tool we all have on the piano. We can plug it into a digital one, a MIDI controller, or even a real piano where it's already there, right? It's been there with the piano from the beginning of time. The pedal. Right. So whenever a lot of us play the piano, especially when you're learning from more experienced players or when you see more experienced players, then figure out, oh, that guy seems to sound a bit better than me. Why? He's playing the same thing. Right. The secret is pretty much in this pedal. So what happens with the pedal is if I just play a chord and lift it, 
it's the end of the sound. But if I hold the pedal, voila, it just goes on and on and on, right? So that's basically the sustain pedal. So what you'd like to do when you're playing pe the pedal is try to explore a few things on the piano. Maybe you could play the same chord in different positions, maybe lower, higher. And as you can see, my pedal is held down, right? And whenever you're changing, you don't want to keep it pressed and then change, isn't it? You don't want to do... It sounds really, really annoying. So what you'd rather do there is play before you play the next chord, lift and then bring it back, back, three, lift and bring back, lift and bring back just before you hit the chord. Don't let both the noises superimpose. Lift. There we go. And coming back. So essentially you could practice the pedal at basically all of your uh, chord changing points. Now there are many uses of the sustain pedal. I've actually made a full video on this which we'll put in the description. So do check it out if you feel that your sustain pedal skills are not so good. Right guys, so the final technique which I'd like to share in this tutorial is what I call as ghosts, right? Now, the ghosts are essentially soft notes which are there, again, very, very inspired by drummers uh, over the years. So what you do is you play a chord progression or even one chord in, in a traditional way, something like this. I'm playing a D major chord, I'm holding the D in my bass. Now what happens here is we are, I would like to start creating some movement or some more rhythmic interest. So what you're hearing now is what I call the ghost. You see this thumb, it's barely hitting the key. Sometimes you don't even hear it. Maybe I forget to play it. But it's that human thing, you know, which just always lingers on on the eighth note. So if you're playing quarter notes or if you're playing on the pulse, two, three, four, you don't have anything inside the pulse to kind of make the music more interesting, to go inside the beat. So that's what I lightly do with this finger. It's usually the thumbs of both my hands and I start always with my left hand thumb or I try to get the ghost with the left hand thumb playing probably the octave, the safest note in the left hand. So you go, there we go. So if I make it a little louder, you may not like this, right? Now it's sounding very forceful. So I go very soft, practice that. So I get that 8th note feel, very subtle 8th note feel. So you could ghost those 8th notes, right, or I could do ghost triplets. One triplet, one triplet, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. You get that 3 feel, right? But it's quite subtle. So that's the whole idea with ghosts or ghosting or the ghost technique on the piano. So I guess all these five techniques which I have shared with you guys today may be things which you'll enjoy, which you may have wondered, oh, is it important, you know, but truthfully, it's generally what most piano players do, myself included, but sometimes we just forget to observe it, you know, it, it probably just evolves over years of playing the piano. And I thought I'll make this lesson to kind of fast track this whole, you know, growth or this whole journey for you as a possibly a younger or a less experienced player watching this video, right? So let's recap guys all the techniques. You first have finger swapping, where you just kind of look a little bit more ugly on the piano with your hands, but why? So that sounds awesome. So essentially when you have to skip big leaps of chords, you could swap out fingers. 
and see how that particular thing goes right so with finger swapping then we also looked at chord flams great for ballads we do tra tra just like a guitar player playing flamenco so then we have the whole finger duties if you will what you play in the lower parts of the chord what you play in the higher register of the chord how you use the thumb moving in and how you use the ring and the pinky ring for the black note and pinky for the white note then we looked at the mysterious sustain pedal which you rarely see in lessons you'll always find the guy's hand uh, some notation books and some fancy app showing you the notes but then you don't see the pedal so i thought i'll mention that a lot of the lessons you find or a lot of the players you hear are all using this sustain pedal which is physically a part of the piano it's just built into the mechanism. Mechanics. So learn that. Pick your pick up one if you can, and get cracking. And last but not least, I talked about this idea of playing ghost notes, which kind of make your chord playing a lot more moving, right? It also keeps you bang on the time. Generally, your timing gets a lot better for some reason when you play ghosts, right? Hope you guys found the lesson useful. As always, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. If you like the lesson, please share the video, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment for something you'd like to learn in the future and keep rocking. Cheers.